Hey guys, Mike here and in this video I'm going to show you several tips and tricks for the iPad Air. For starters, the iPad Air comes with iOS 7 pre-installed. And this version of iOS changed quite a few things from its predecessors, not just aesthetically, but in terms of functionality as well. Let's take the way you unlock the iPad for instance. You can now tap anywhere on the display and just slide to the right in order to unlock it. Besides that, you can drag from the top for the notification panel or drag from the bottom for the newly introduced control panel directly from the lock screen without having to unlock your device first. Speaking about the control panel, this one integrates the audio player, brightness and volume controls in one place and also adds a few quick toggles and quick launch options for the camera and timer. That's useful and definitely something we've been expecting on iOS for a while, but I for one would have wished to be able to customize the toggles and options displayed here, but that's not the case. Moving on, once you get past the unlock screen, you will notice the new animations introduced with iOS 7. As someone who expects instant response from its device, I was highly annoyed by those, but you can somewhat address them. Go to Settings, General, Accessibility and make sure Reduce Motion is set to On. This will temper the animations and the parallax effect on the icons and alerts. From the same accessibility panel in the settings, you can also adjust the phone size, you can increase the contrast of some backgrounds for better legibility and also make the text bold system-wide. For that, the iPad will ask to restart itself. Those aside, iOS 7 brings a new multitasking panel. We no longer have those small icons on the bottom of the screen, but actual larger presentations of the apps. You can close an app by swiping it up the screen, kind of what we've seen on Android devices for a while. There's no option to quickly close all the apps, but you can close two or even three at once if you want to. You can access this multitasking panel by double pressing the home button, but also by placing four fingers on the screen and swipe up from any application. In fact, the iPad supports several different gestures. For instance, you can move between applications by putting again four fingers on the screen and sliding to the sides. For that, you need to be in an app already. This gesture does not work on the home screen. Also, if you want to quickly minimize an app, just put again those four fingers on the screen and bring them together. And speaking of gestures, the spotlight search is no longer the first screen towards the left, like on previous iOS versions. You now have to put one finger on the display while on any home screen and just pull down to access it. And while we're still on the home screen, you probably know by now that the iPad comes with plenty of apps pre-installed that you cannot delete. You can however group them in a folder. In the past though, you could not get the new stand app into a folder, but now you can. And since we are talking about pre-installed apps, I should mention that you can take voice calls with FaceTime on the iPad Air on top of the video calls you could take in the past both on Wi-Fi and on cellular. Oh, and the video and audio quality are somewhat better on this new iPad due to the brighter camera and the two microphones on the Air, not just one like on the older iPads. That aside, there's still Siri on the iPad Air and it's gotten smarter. You can select a voice gender for Siri and between several different languages. And on top of that, it has a few new functions, like the ability to toggle off radios and other system settings, or the ability to learn how to pronounce certain names and so on. Moving on, there are a couple of neat tricks that involve the buttons on the iPad Air. For instance, if you want to take a picture with the iPad, you need to open the camera app and then you can use the volume down key to control the shutter. Pressing it once takes one photo, keeping it pressed will result in a burst of pictures. Besides that, you can take a screenshot by pressing and holding the power and the home buttons. Once you release them, you'll get a glow effect on the screen that notifies you that a copy of your display has been saved in your photos album. Back to that camera, you should know that on the iPad Air, you're not going to get all the options available on the iPhones. For instance, there's no panorama mode, no filters and the ability to take a picture while recording a video is missing as well. However, you can zoom in and out while shooting a clip. Alright, last but not least in this clip, we're going to once again turn our attention towards some of the pre-installed apps. Safari now offers a private navigation mode. You can enable it by opening a new tab and hitting the private writing in the bottom left corner. When the private mode is active, the browser's interface will turn darker. And there are a few neat tricks you should know about the email app as well, if you're using it. You can swipe to the left on any message in the mailbox and get the option to move it or an entire conversation to a different folder or archive it. And while writing a message, you can now apply formatting to your texts by selecting them and hitting the bold italic underline option from the popping menu. Alright, these are the few things I wanted to show you in this clip, a set of useful tips and tricks that you might or might not have known already. If you do however know any other cool features or tricks for the iPad Air, I'd love to hear about them in the comments below, and I'll include them in a follow-up video while giving you credit for your findings, so I'm looking forward for your replies. Anyway, that's about it for now, thanks for watching, make sure to hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys soon.